Hi, I'm James Ross. And this is UK Ride Review, a series of roller coaster reviews for the Ride Guide where I look at the best and worst British rides and all the others in between. You've probably noticed that I'm English, and as such I crave disappointment and I love to moan about things. So imagine how much fun I had with this review for the Pepsi Max Big One at Pleasure Beach Blackpool. When the Big One opened to the public at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I was only two, so I don't really remember any of the hype. But I'd imagine this ride really put Blackpool on the map. The Big One was opened in 1994, and when it opened it took the world records for height, speed and drop angle. Now, this is quite an astonishing feat, but made even more amazing when you consider the park that it was being built in. Anybody who knows the Pleasure Beach knows just how tightly packed everything is. There's a shop, a fountain, a hedge maze, a path, another fountain, or a ride covering almost every inch of the park area. So the big one has to snake through rides, over paths, and around the back of the park. I can't imagine how much fun the designers had. Speaking of the designers, they were Aerodynamics, a company now well known for mega coasters such as the big one. The ride was eventually sponsored by Pepsi Max, and the name was changed to reflect the new sponsorship. One of the best things about the Pepsi Max Big One is the visual impact. Before you even enter the park, it's right there in front of you. There is almost nowhere in the park that you can't see some of it, and all photos from outside the park are dominated by the huge blue tower of the lift hill. The image of this ride has almost become as much of an icon for Blackpool as the Blackpool Tower. Since the Pleasure Beach is an amusement park and not a theme park, scenery is not to be expected as such. And anyway, the ride looks great on its own and it doesn't really need much. However, for the station, I would have liked something a little better than this. I don't want much, just a few stylistic features to give the station some interest. At the moment, it feels like a garage, and because the station is one big cattle pen, it also feels very cramped. Depending on what sort of mood Blackpool are in, they'll either run one or two trains. For a circuit of this length, two is a bit annoying, and one is just downright ridiculous. Here's where the ride starts, through two giant cans of Pepsi Max. Which is probably the most ridiculous out of place looking piece of sponsorship theming ever. I mean, it's about as subtle as painting the revolution orange and sticking a giant iron brew logo on the side of it. Oh no, wait, wait, they already did that. Well, I guess Blackpool just can't do subtle sponsorship. I mean, surely a park like Holton Towers could. Oh yeah, I forgot about the flume. Well, I suppose tasteful sponsorship is not possible after all. So, after an age climbing the lift hill, we're finally ready to take on the big one. First up is that huge drop overlooking the Irish Sea. As you'd expect, this drop is absolutely fantastic. This is followed by a hill. Well, technically it is a hill, it goes up and down, but roller coaster hills are supposed to be curvy and parabolic like maths. What we have here is a triangle, with the corner lopped off. I'd show you the rest of this video, but unfortunately it looks like this. Essentially, the rest of the layout is spent negotiating more airtimeless triangular hills and moving around the park at a moderate speed. I'd expect airtime a plenty from this ride type, but other than the first drop, you won't really get any. There is one highlight near the end, this near miss pulling through a tunnel. Of course, this is an arrow roller coaster, so expect roughness. Luckily, you're only held in by lap bars, so the roughness doesn't have a tendency to take itself out on your neck. What I hate the most about the Pepsi Max Big One is that it has the potential to be an absolutely fantastic ride. With 74 miles per hour and over 200 foot of height to play with, you could pack in some intense forces and lots of airtime. To its credit, the first drop is fantastic, and the length makes up a little for the lack of forces. I'm a coaster enthusiast, so I tune into everything that's wrong with the ride, and moan about it afterwards. Most regular park guests love the Pepsi Max Big One, mainly because of the height and the speed. And I suppose at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Time for some ratings. Visual appeal and theme. The ride is naturally great to look at, but that's where all my compliments end. The station is rather vanilla, and there seems no major attempt to make the ride look better. And, seriously, the drinks cans? For this, the big one gets 5 out of 10. Design and operation. Considering the logistics of building a ride of this scale in a park of this size, I think the design is fantastic. And also, diving through different ride structures adds a little something to the ride. 
The operation side, however, leaves a lot to be desired. If they're only running one train, expect to wait a long time. So I'm going to give a 6. The physical ride. The main drop gets the ride 6 points. The rest of the layout doesn't. The roughness knocks one off. I feel a bit harsh. Let's face it, the ride is probably the most recognised coaster in Britain, and the public love it. Me? I don't think it delivers half as much as it really should, but I suppose if the park management wanted to tear it down, we'd just end up with another fountain. My overall rating for the Pepsi Max Big One is 6 out of 10.